A new TV station is going on air in London this Thursday night, aiming to give a platform to the voices of those in opposition to the current leadership of Iran. Now, it comes just over a week after 19 state-run Iranian TV and radio stations were banned in the EU. Uh, let's discuss this now with investigative journalist Tony Gosling, who's standing by live for us in Bristol. And it's good to see you today, Tony. Uh, let's talk about this. Raha TV has been broadcasting online for quite some time now. What do you make of the timing of their television debut? Well, Rory, it's fascinating. It follows on quite nicely, in a way, from Laura's story about WikiLeaks. That's about internet and domestic suppression of information. This is about the international suppression of information on the satellite systems. Uh, I mean, the 19 channels that have been closed down. I mean, you're watching me on the satellite now, uh, and if you don't like what I'm saying, you're quite at liberty to go over to your television or use your remote and switch me off. What happens, though, uh, when uh, one of these faceless organisations, big corporations, like Utelsat or Intelsat, decides they're going to close it for you? Uh, that is not freedom of expression, and it's actually quite sinister, I think, that, that many of these channels are now being closed down. Uh, I mean, the other side of all this is what the uh, you know, what we've got as an opposition or an alternative to those things is the state-run uh, media in, across the Western world and independent media, which seems very, very aligned on most of the issues. And who is it that's actually caused these channels to be shut down, the ones that this new channel has come along to replace? Well, uh, it's largely the uh, Baroness Ashton at the European Union that's been uh, putting these sanctions on. Now, we all thought that that would be economic sanctions, maybe stop trade, that kind of thing. But how many people and thought, oh, well, that means we won't be able to get any information well, I mean, that's just, you know, stif from these stifling parts of the world. Well, stifling information coming out of Iran, also stifling any type of uh, freedom of speech. Uh, Tony, let's talk about motives here. What, what do you think of the, the actual motives of UK authorities here allowing a voice to the opposition while Iranian state channels are silenced? What are they doing? Well, the, the opposition has got absolutely every right to freedom of expression, just as those satellite channels should be allowed to, to speak. The ultimate thing here is it should be for the viewers to decide, not for the people that own those satellites. Most viewers don't own satellites, Roy, do they? So they can't decide uh, to change uh, what channels are allowed to be out there. We need that freedom of expression. And this is also, in the backdrop of this, is the build-up to potential war in the Middle East. We've got this battle going on in Syria with most of the Syrian opposition groups controlled by these business organisations in the West, like the Council on Foreign Relations, uh, these kinds of groups, very well documented by Charlie Skelton in The Guardian recently, these are front organisations. They're not really representing Syrian people. And these are the so-called experts that we're seeing right across Western television. So what we're seeing is a, a kind of difference of opinion going on in different parts of the world, which is based on who is controlling the satellites in that area. So we're getting very different information uh, from these different channels. Actually, I think this is very dangerous because what we're seeing here is a kind of uh, the ghost of Joseph Goebbels haunting the satellite channels and the airwaves now as propaganda starts to prepare us for a potential war in the Middle East well, and it uh, you, you interpret know, I mean, Tony, whatever you, provocation you name is it. for that. You name it. A lot, a lot of people are talking about the, these uh, propaganda war games certainly going on. Uh, briefly, Tony, I'm running low on time here. Let's talk about the bigger picture uh, regarding Iran. Do you believe that sanctions and threats of war are the right way of dealing with Iran and its so-called nuclear standoff? Well, of course not. Uh, what there needs to be, I mean, Iran, for example, is a democratic country. It's allowed uh, under the Non-Proliferation Treaty to develop nuclear power. I think it's also interesting to see what the Iranians have been saying about their nuclear weapon program. They say we have no intention to develop nuclear weapons. But if anyone was watching a program here in Britain yes. called the Cook Report back in the 1990s, they'll have known that during the collapse of the former Soviet Union, there were actually nuclear weapons being offered on the black market. So maybe the Iranians have already got those nuclear weapons. This is why it's so dangerous. When we go back to Cuba in the 1960s, the Americans were planning to invade Cuba. The military were telling their politicians and their people, we've got to invade Cuba before the nukes arrive. Actually, what was happening at the time was there were already tactical nuclear weapons in Cuba. So we have to be very, very careful, I think, about trying to start a war that is preventing nuclear weapons being used. Nuclear weapons may be already on the scene, Rory, and this is what bothers me. And this is why I think it's important that people in the West have got the analysis from all parts of the world, including Iran and including Syria. Well, Tony, it's certainly a conversation that requires more time than we have available here on RT. Investigative journalist Tony Gosling, live in Bristol. Thanks so much for coming on.